be self-healing. Mm -hmm. Now should I tell a joke? It's time for a joke? Yeah, let's, let's have plenty of jokes. We would not be here today if our great, 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 great grandfathers didn't survive without pharmaceutics. Yeah, As like, a matter of fact, it wasn't a, without pharmaceutics alone, it was with all the magic medicine. They survived, and sh genetically, that's the only reason you and I are here. So why are we giving it all away to the world of pharmaceutics? Sorry. Well, I work. suppose there's, uh, you know, very effective marketing strategies. Oh, yeah. There's, uh, yeah. We're smarter and, than that. Come and, on. And there's so many companies out there that, you but know... we're smarter than that. Why do we let them take us over? We're smarter. We're mm. much smarter. I mean, uh, uh, Beach and Klein or whatever, I won't use names, but you know, whatever they are, pharmaceutics and all yeah, Well, uh, Pfizer last year was, yeah. fa was fined $2.3 billion exactly. for, for marketing their products unethically. Exactly. You know, and it's like... And if you, won't let, if you won't make me follow up on this, yeah. they are inventing flu. Mm -hmm. But before they do that, Patents in place. The, the, the pills are in place. Yeah. And so they invent the flu, the fear goes around the world, everybody has to buy it, well, they're all ready to sell it. Yeah, because I remember reading something uh, recently about swine flu, and yes. you know, they were out trying to scare the people about swine flu. It was and invented in Tennessee. And well, uh, we know I, we know the laboratory where it was invented, actually. Right. Well, yes. I, what, what what I remember reading was that the the patent was applied for, I think, several months before, Definitely. or the patent was granted yeah. several months before it ever Absolutely. broke out. And you sort of think, you know, Absolutely. what's going on? Well, you asked me about me my, in my in India. Uh, <clears throat> I should really go back to say that that when I was very small, nineteen forty eight, actually. It was like a, a vision of the, what people would, perhaps in this part of the world, call the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. A vision of the Holy Spirit baptized me. No, no, no dipping into water and stuff like that. That's, that's religion. But it baptized me with the recognition that we are actually souls and not human beings. So that was for me, 1948. And so I joined the, what's called the Christian Science Movement there. They also have a church, but it's mostly I, I, because it's a Christian Science Movement, the science of Christhood. The science, it's not a Christianity. Forget that, because it has to be okay for Islam and for Buddha and everybody else. But, but the science of, of Christhood, which is our true soul being as Christhood, the science of Christhood, because we didn't have enough science until the 18th century, really, in our world. As Sir Isaac Newton and people like that, they brought science. But they kept it all into the material universe. My interaction with Einstein was still about the material universe. E equals mc squared is the material universe. So I wasn't aware when I was with Einstein that there was other universes. That only came to me in 1948. Mm -hmm. And I, unfortunately, he died of a broken heart before because of the Hiroshima thing, uh, before I was able to have a time with him on this mm -hmm. subject. But the interesting thing is, in his desk drawer was a copy of Mrs. Eddy's Science and Health with Key to Scriptures, which is a Christian science textbook in Einstein's desk drawer. It's, it's mm -hmm. documented. We right, know that's right. the case. So therefore, the metaphysics was in place at the end of the 19th century, 1870s, uh, when, when she published first uh, the science of Christianity, mm -hmm. which means that healing does not need to have any outside intervention. You see, everybody thinks they've got to go out and get something and drink it, do it, and or have the surgeon's knife from outside. No, it's an inside job. We were devised with self-healing within our system, even physically. But the physical is only one aspect of the spiritual. It's only one aspect of the mental, it's only one aspect of the consciousness. And so therefore, what I have done since 1948, I've had no pills, I've had no medicine. That's why we had to redefine medicine for this interview. Yeah. I've had nothing. No alcohol, no tobacco, no drugs. Since 1946, actually, but by 1948, nothing. And I'm more healthy now than I've ever been, as yeah. you can tell. I remember, yeah, I just think, <laughs> when I see you walk into the room, you've got this like just radiant glow about you and this vibrant energy. Absolutely, and yes. I remember um, 
did you recently or a few years ago uh, claim Mount Sinai? Yes. Yes, I'm a good friend of a guy named Moses. I think you've heard of him, maybe. Yeah, uh, okay, now, in the interdimensions, all these people still exist. Remember that. Mm -hmm. In the interdimensions, they did it because the soul is eternal, but it doesn't stay in this dimension. It goes to another dimension. And so Moses said, look, look, uh, you, you climb, you're 80 now, so you climb Mount Sinai the way I did. So... So we, we, we contact the teenager inside of us, uh -huh. and it goes through the consciousness into the body. And when it's in the body, then you have more energy than you've ever had. And I ran up Mount Sinai. When I, I went down there, I said, okay, I'll go down there, because he went when he was 80. Uh -huh. and he, he went and brought down the Ten Commandments and the, and the burning bush with the I am, the I am that I am, which is the main thing. And that's what it was there. So, so I said, okay, I'll go down. I remember seeing a photograph of the mountain that you climbed, yeah. and you know I go to the gym four or five times a week. I think I'm in a very healthy state, <laughs> and I'm looking at this going like this. This would mm. look like a real challenge for me. There wasn't even any path going up the mountain, and it's all broken rock. Yeah, it just looked like it was completely volcanic. Nothing green, you know, all broken. It looked like a, a challenge yeah. for a mountain. Oh, I just <laughs> ran up that mountain. I ran. I got there before the twenty-three year, twenty-six year old kids that were with me there. I got up there first. Well, that was just not because I'm so great, but because the, the actual technology is there for anybody that's listening to this can go to that space. If you need any help, I'll be happy to help you with it. Mm -hmm. But it's your own space. When you get into that soul space, the energy is divine energy being manifested through you, and so you can use it without running, running out of energy, and you can do whatever you can need to do. I mean, it even goes so far that you can change your body you can go in other dimensions yourself, but I'm not going to get into that because we don't have time on this mm -hmm. on this interview. But there are other things uh, that one can do, and then make sure you also keep this in good shape too. There also, uh, were you not also you were speaking in India as well about healing, or there were some. Yes, well, they put on in India a few years ago. I think it's about ten years now. Something called the polypathic. The Polypathic uh, Institute, they formed it. Uh -huh. And it was to discover all the methods of healing that were not allopathic. Uh -huh. All the methods of healing that were not from pharmaceutical and allopathic. And in India was a good place to do it because they've had the Vedic healing there yeah. for a, a long, long time. Yeah. They found 105 modalities of healing, 105 wow. modalities that we had nothing to do with medicine. Nothing to do with medicine. So they asked me to come down and, and, and give. Actually, they asked both me and my wife, and she, also as a Christian scientist, gave the spiritual healing as it is given in, in Christian science. Yeah. Because her mother was a practitioner, and, and we've been that for most of our lives. But I was asked to deal with spiritual healing. What is it? How do we do it? How safe is it? And, you know, how do we get going in that way? And so that was the first one. It's 10 years now. And so I gave several addresses on spiritual healing. Mm -hmm. And spiritual healing, to me, I would say, because this may run out in a moment, is not a matter of trying to fix broken things. Now, if we can get out of the idea that we're trying to fix something that's broken, so then we're into the area of spiritual healing. Because spiritual healing is recognizing the perfection of God and man, the perfection now. And if you focus on that to the exclusion of anything else, it draws the evidence up to support it. So say you've got some person that's having a health challenge yes. and you know, they've mm -hmm. been to the conventional allopathic medicine, yeah, you know, they want to give them like horrible treatments mm -hmm. like chemotherapy and other oh, you know, really detrimental drugs. Yeah. How would a person that maybe doesn't have any experience of what you're talking about, how would they go out and apply that in their life? I would offer them to be willing to be very disciplined. Mm -hmm. And disciplined means in emotion, in physical, and, and feeling. And feeling and emotion. Be really disciplined and keep your mind off the problem. Mm -hmm. And then if you can do it yourself, then send messages through your whole system saying that it is perfect and needs...